8 EE 7 B this is eighth grade expressions and equations the seventh part with the sub part of B we've already done uh, sub part a so now we're going to be doing the sub part B and we are still solving linear equations in one variable and this time we're going to be rational number coefficients in the form of a fraction we've been using whole numbers or integers and now we're going to see what this all looks like put together with uh, fraction coefficients. Some terms to know. I don't think I've added anything new onto this list. Uh, please double check your journals and make sure that you have uh, each of these words defined. Uh, like I said before, this is an extension of what we learned in the first video in the last subpart A. So. Um, we're going to see what it looks like with these fractions. Right from the standard, solve linear equations with rational number coefficients. So I see the 1 fourth um, outside of the parentheses sign there, and that's what we're going to be dealing with today. Um, trying to use the distributive property, combine our like terms, um, move terms from one side to the other, and ultimately figure out what that value of x is that will make this equation true. So let's start with the distributive property. Um, you know, always use GEMDIS or PEMDIS uh, first. Look inside of this parenthesis and see if you're able to put these two terms together. Uh, one is a constant and one has a coefficient uh, attached to a variable, so these terms are not alike and you are not able to add them together. So we are in fact going to use the distributive property first with our one-fourth. So um, when you're using the distributive property, you're multiplying the outside term times each of the inside terms. So you have to figure out what one-fourth multiplied by eight is. Uh, maybe you can do it in your head. Maybe we do it off to the side. I'm gonna come off to the side right here in pink. So one-fourth multiplied by eight. So one fourth of eight is two plus, there's your plus sign, and then you have to do the same thing. What is one fourth of 12? So one fourth of 12. Uh, this time I'm, I'm going to cross cancel. So four goes into both of these two numbers, four goes in one time and four goes in three times and we multiply across three over one is three so we have three let me get that red three x's Uh, we didn't do, we're not going to distribute to this term over here because it's dangling off of the end with addition sign. So we're just going to bring this 3x straight down. Now, take a look at the left side of the wall. Here comes my wall. Is there anything that I can combine on the left side of the wall before I start moving things um, from side to side? So look for your like terms. The like terms that I see are the x's. I see that I have a positive 3x and a positive 3x. And when I put those two terms together, I'm going to get a positive 6x. So two positive 6x equals 20. It appears as though I've gotten all my x's together. I do have some constants that aren't put together. I have a 2 on the left, and I have a 20 on the right. So I need to bring my 2 over to the right, and we have to change its sign like we did in the last video. So 6x equals that 20. We take our positive 2 left. 
bring it to the right and make it negative 2. And now we have 6x equaling 18. Divide both sides by 6. So x is equal to 3. A similar problem. I have the 18 on the left all by itself, and I just kind of moved all the extra um, variables and distributive property to the right. I've just kind of flipped the problem around and put some different numbers in here. However, we still do the same thing. So check inside. First, am I allowed to put 9 and 6x together? Uh, they are not alike. So I'm going to distribute. Come off to the side here. One third multiplied by nine, and then one third will be multiplied by six x. If you want to put the x in there, I will. And let's go. This will cancel to one and two x. So this is two x. nothing with this guy yet. All right, let's uh, get the wall going. Looking for like terms to put together. Uh, nothing on the left to put together yet. However, on the right, I see some X's once again. And let's get those guys together. So 18 is equal to 3. And this together. Positive 2 plus 3 is positive 5x. All right. Bring the 3 constant over to the left with the 18. So if it was positive on the right and it becomes negative on the left. Sorry, I'm crowded over here in the corner. Uh, 18 minus 3 is 15. Divide both sides by 5. So x is equal to, oh, once again, x is equal to 3. Last problem, I've put in uh, multiple fractions and variables in the distributive property. And, uh, you know, you can start over here on the right. Uh, we see some parentheses. You're looking for your order of operations. And you are not allowed to put your 15 and M together, subtracting wise. So we are going to, you guessed it, distribute. Let's see what that comes out to be here. Two fifths. Multiplied by 15 and 2 fifths multiplied by negative 1m. Cancel. We're going to get uh, 6 over 1. Let's write that out. 6. Nothing to cancel here, so we go straight across. 2 times negative 1m is negative uh, 2m. 5 times 1 is 5. So we have 6 negative 2 fifths m. Let's get our wall. Here comes the wall. And looking to combine like terms. There isn't uh, anything on the left that I could put together. This is a, a coefficient number with a variable, and this is a constant. 
um, and then we have a constant and a coefficient for the variable. So uh, the only thing we are allowed to do here is just to move things from side to side and try to try to get all those things together. So I'm going to actually start with my constants this time. I'm going to bring that six from the right over to the left. Let's start there. Nine tenths m plus 32. If I take a positive 6 from the right and bring it to the left, I change its sign to negative 6. And then I'm just left with this fraction coefficient. Okay, put those together. 9 tenths m. 32 minus 6 is 26, positive. And I didn't do anything with this one. OK, um, now I need to get our m's together. And I'm going to have to bring the 9 tenths m over to the right, and it looks like I'll have to be subtracting that. That's going to get a little tricky, but um, I'm sure we can make that happen. So 26 is equal to negative 2 fifths m. And this is what goes to the other side and becomes negative 9 tenths m. All right, I'm going to erase all of this right here. We need some space. So um, subtracting fractions that have negatives in them, we follow the same integer rules as if they were whole numbers or integers. Um, so let's say negative. I'm not going to put the variable in now. We'll add that in at the end. Take away 9 tenths. And recall, you're not able to subtract negatives, so we're going to have to use the um, adding the inverse option here. So negative 2 fifths. Change the subtraction sign to addition. Say, uh, change the 9 tenths to an opposite sign, which is negative 9 tenths. And now we have to add our fractions. In order to add the fractions, you need a common denominator. So right now I have a 5 and a 10. And I know that my least common denominator would have to be a 10. So we're going to keep this fraction the same because we need its denominator. Now we have to make an alteration to this denominator. So we need this denominator to be 10 also. So what do we do to get a 10? Well, we would have to multiply this denominator by 2. So 5 multiplied by 2 is 10. So 2 multiplied by 2 would have to be 4. Now we have um, common denominators. And we have two negatives that we're going to add together. So the sum total would be um, negative 4 plus negative 9 is negative 13 tenths m. All right, so let's write all that out down here. 26 is equal to, we said, negative the improper fraction of 13 tenths M. Still need to solve for M. It's a long problem. Let's get rid of all this. And we're going to carry that up. Let's carry all that up here. 26 equals negative 13 tenths M. All right, last year, when you learned um, how to solve equations that have fractions touching a variable, 
you needed to use the multiplicative inverse, also known as the reciprocal, because we need this uh, coefficient to be a 1. And the only way to turn this coefficient into a 1 is to multiply by its reciprocal, uh, because everything is going to cancel in your numerators and denominators down to a 1. So let's do that. If I were to get rid of this fraction of negative 13 tenths, I'm going to multiply by negative 10 over 13. I, oh, you know, that doesn't look very good. I'm going to put parentheses because it kind of looks like a subtraction sign, but it's not. It's a negative sign. So if I do that to the right side, I'm also going to have to do that to the left side. So let's multiply this side by negative 10 over 13 also. And since we have a fraction, they both need to be a fraction, so we could always put that over 1. It doesn't change the value. And let's do some canceling here. So the negative times a negative equals a positive. We know that. The 13s cancel to 1s. The 10s cancel to 1s. And what am I left with? I'm left with positive deal. On the left side, a little extra work here. Uh, cancel my 13 and my 26. 13 goes into 13 once. 13 goes into 26 twice. And now I have to multiply. The top numerator, negative 10 times 2 is negative 20. And 1 times 1 is 1. So we have a simplified answer of negative 20 is equal to m. Welcome to algebra, everybody. This is um, quite a long extended problem that has rationals, rational fractions. No need to be afraid of these. We're going to do a bunch of them in class. Um, you know, it just takes practice. I think uh, the more you practice these and, and get comfortable with them, you know, you're going to be just fine. So. Recall that three things can occur while solving equations. Uh, this was from the last uh, subpart A. That was 8EE7 uh, subpart A. And there were three things that can occur in your answers. You could get x equaling A, which happened in all of our problems today. All of our problems came out to be a value of x. Uh, or we can have a equaling a when the left is exactly the same as the right, and that would be infinitely many solutions. Um, so we'll call this one solution can happen. Um, infinitely many or in the bottom case, uh, no solution would occur. And that's when the left is not equal to the right, and it will never be equal to the right in this world that we live in. In your journal, define the given terms from page two in the flip chart, as always. And please write a few sentences on what you think you learned that was new to you uh, from this video. And I will see you all in class.